So for the first one, it's negative 45 degrees, right? All right, so if this is negative 45 degrees, right? And I want to get back to it. All right, let's say this is a blue one. So I can start here, right, and go 45 degrees down. How can I get back to it? Do one full rotation, that's negative 360, and then go how much further? Another negative 45, so it's negative 360 plus a negative 45. 405, right? Similarly, if I wanted to get here, I can go in the positive direction. I'll move all the way around until I get to here and be 45 degrees shy of 360. So what's 360 minus 45? 315, which is what this angle represents. So that's what I'm really trying to have you do is find two angles that'll stop in the exact same spot. Well, one would look like this. Whoops. This is the negative 405, and then the other one would move like this, and that's the positive 315. Uh, usually pre-calc is about as far as you go. It depends on what you're going into. Anything that's business-based or nursing-based, yes? You have to take either pre-calc or calc. Uh, you'll have to take some business math classes. You'll have to take statistics and I think probability, but that's about it. Because that's one rotation. No, but but we always start, this is our initial side, this is where we always start. So I'm going one full rotation in the negative, and then I have to get back to where we're supposed to stop. Well, we're supposed to start here. This is the initial side. So whenever you start counting, it always starts here. So the original said negative 45 degrees, which is here, right? Okay, so whatever I do with this blue line, I'm starting here at zero, and I have to get back to here. So I'm doing one full rotation, and then I have to go the other 45 degrees so I can actually get to the right stop point. Yes. So I'm doing one rotation in the negative. All right, so um, to convert between degrees and radians, let me see if I copied anything. Nope. All right. So real quick, ladies and gents, let's get through this. All right, so if you notice on the unit circle, right, what do you know about 180 and pi? Are they the same or are they different? They're the same. So pi over 180 is actually the exact same thing as 1, right? Okay. So if you look at all of our radian measures, is pi on top or on bottom? Look at all of your radian measures on your unit circle. Is pi on top or on bottom? Top. So I'm going to keep that going. And then how many degrees? 180, right? And what's degrees divided by degrees? They cancel out, right? So what's the only unit that I have left? The radians, right? This is pi radians over 180 degrees. So I get 125 pi over 180. So what's 125 over 180 reduced to, please? But I need it as a fraction. So 25 pi over 36. And that is what 125 degrees is as radians. So you have to know this formula, so make sure you have it written down. To go from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 180. Okay, so to go the other way, what do you think I'm going to multiply by? 180 over pi. Okay. It is. It's unit analysis, yes. Negative 180 pi over 12 pi. What happens to pi? What's pi divided by pi? 1, right? And what's 180 divided by 12? 15. So you get negative 15 degrees. So to convert from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 180, 180 degrees. So the pi radians take each other out, and that leaves you with just the unit of degrees. Yes, sir? Oh, okay, just making sure. All right, so to convert from degrees to radians, is you multiply by pi over 180. To convert from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. Everybody okay with that? Yeah? All right, so please get these two formulas written down. Okay, so arc length. Arc length is the distance we're traveling on the outside of the circle. So it's based off of the circumference formula. So S, which is the letter that we use to stand for arc length, is equal to the radius times theta. Okay, theta is called your central angle. And then R is, of course, just the radius of the circle. Everybody okay with that? Okay, now area of a sector. Do you guys know what a sector is? It's a block of 
a circle. So if you hear people talk about Sector 117, that means that if you're like watching an old war movie or something, they divided the battlefield up into blocks, and they named them, and then you're assigned certain locations, okay? So a sector is just a part of the whole. For circles in particular, it's this area in here. It's the light blue section. Everybody okay? So it's got an initial side and a terminal side, and then they want to know how much area of the circle is contained between those two. So the formula that we use is area is equal to one-half R squared theta, where R is your radius, theta is your angle. Everybody all right with that? Yes, no, maybe? So it's just plug and chug on these two, but you need to know the formulas, or else the homework's not going to make any sense. Okay? We got those? Okay. So here's your actual homework assignment. We got through it. Yep. 